Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I'm some guy. And welcome back to Bizarre Earthquake. We're on to day two now. So at this point in the game, you would expect the story to be somewhat established. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, I really don't understand the game's plot. Like, I get what's going on. There's two seismologists. They don't like each other, but they work together still because, well, they just do. They're at some place in the middle of nowhere to investigate an earthquake. Rival seismologists show up, and this is bad because maybe they'll figure something out about the earthquake before us, and that will ruin our careers or something. Like, I guess I'm just having an issue trying to understand what the game's stakes are. But what I do understand is that I need to play the intro now and get to the game. And to think, everyone in that music video now is at least in their early 40s. Unlike our protagonist, Boar. How old do you think he is? I'm guessing mid-twenties. Any hoot, he's up now, and he's going downstairs for breakfast, which means we get a kind of creepy cutscene. Well, I'm convinced now that our hero has some secret mutant ability, considering that cup goes to his face like it's on a magnet. I'm not trying to be judgmental or anything, but canned soup, at least with her sweater, it makes her look like she's got a bit of a muffin top. But at the same time though, you can see that she's got some abs underneath that sweater. It's a wee bit peculiar. So putting aside the animation antics we got going on here, our two characters talk about what they gotta do today. Basically, they need to gather up supplies so they can explore the crack they found in the wood. Well, that's what Boar's gonna do. While Canned Soup's gonna engage in some espionage. There are some loud ass birds around here. But anyway, Boar steals some keys that are just left out by the old lady. So now he can steal things from other people's room and oh my. Uh, is it just me, or is Can Soup Prairie Dog in there? Well, I guess that makes sense considering I've never seen a bathroom in this game, and they've been here a couple days. So the matter to the bowels aside, our hero goes into the rival's room, steals some stuff out of the assistant's bag, and then goes to some garage and steals some stuff from the old lady. I know, what a hero. But in all honesty, this is probably the most adventure gamey aspect of this game. The whole breaking and entering thing without any repercussions or anybody noticing that anything's gone. So yeah, Boar's mission is just straight up find items, go back to the house. While canned soup is break into the professor's room, steal some notes or just look at them, and find out something really compelling. Okay, I've never read anything out loud to you guys in this series yet, but allow me to read this. Hmm, Zaya believes that earthquakes are not natural disasters, just like me. Does that mean that these seismologists don't believe that earthquakes are natural occurrences? Is that what this game's about? We're playing as some pseudoscientists? Some conspiracy theorists are like, oh man, big seismology doesn't want the people to know that earthquakes are faked for the Illuminati and the NWO, cause Hulk Hogan needs money and I don't even know. Now I could give it the benefit of the doubt and be like, ah, that's just a translation error. What the game really wants to say is, ah, the earthquakes that are going on here are not natural, they're man-made. But the problem is, why are they bringing this up now? It feels like this could be a compelling argument to make earlier on in the game. Like, on the way down here, Can Soup could be like, hmm, there's been a lot of mysterious earthquakes occurring around here. I need to investigate it because something seems off about this. Like, no prior mention at all of this, but now we're being dumped down that the earthquakes are fake. So I guess that kind of explains why Can Soup doesn't want rival seismologists here, because she thinks there's a conspiracy going on, and she wants to be the first one to uncover it for maybe the fame and fortune? Why? Why is she keeping this a secret? If she thinks there's a conspiracy, don't you think it would be to her benefit to have lots of other seismologists down here to verify her thoughts? You think that'd be really good for her when she's going public be like, look, me and a bunch of these other seismologists think there's some shenanigans going on here with earthquakes. But 
I guess not. Canned soup's just so goddamn selfish. I mean, look at this. She's going to send Boar down to this crack, into a fault line, with just a rope they found laying around and some stuff they stole from an old lady. I don't think Osha would like any of this. So while down in the crack, Boar finds a mysterious bomb-shaped thing that's still making noise and just picks it up and puts it in his back pocket. Cause that just sounds so damn smart. Okay, you knew I had to do something like that. But anyway, while down in the hole, Boar discovers something weird in the side of it. So Boar finds a wonky little statue that appears to have some weird depth to it. And consider that constructive criticism. But anyway, Boar finds an ancient statue inside a fault line, making these earthquakes all the more intriguing. So Boar climbs out of the fault line, and gives a bomb to canned soup, and she's like, hey, I know a dude who's an expert on explosives and stuff. I'll send him pictures of it, and he'll tell us stuff about it, I guess. And Boar's like, cool, I'll do some research about the area and see what sort of historical stuff happened here, because we found something historical, so clearly there's history in this ancient land. I mean, we in Turkey, for God's sake, there is a lot of history here. I'm sure you could trip over antiquities everywhere. But nevertheless, the rival seismologists show up, and they're like, whoa, there's a big-ass crack here. And Can Soup and Boar's like, I know. And remember, these are our rivals. Can Soup doesn't like these people. She doesn't want them here. But she's like, hey guys, when you're done, I'll give you guys a ride back to the hostel because I'm being friendly now? Again, it's very weird. How do these people manage their relationships? So on the car ride back to the hostel, the seismologists talk about how that crack's bigger than anything they've ever seen before. And can soup mix one of boar, somehow. Oh yeah, and also, they creepily laugh in unison. Maybe there is something really bizarre about these earthquakes. So back at the hostel, our heroes go their separate way. Boar's like, I'm going to research some history. But first, the old lady's like, hey, a clock's broken. Fix it for me. And if we do that, she in turn will give us some history about the area because I guess Google does not exist around here. Yeah, Boar appears to have a fourth wall breaking sense of humor. So hey, Hoot, we gotta find some batteries now, which we do. And then we put it in the clock and the old lady's like, here you go, have a book about the history of this area that I just conveniently keep in my back pocket. So Boar's quest is done. But what about canned soup, you say? Well, this is what she's up to. Yeah, she's just messing around on AIM. Sending messages to that dude who's going to look at the bomb for her. He seems a bit creepy. So now that that's out of the way, our characters regroup and inform each other of what they've just done. Can Soup's like, send pictures to the dude. While Boar starts spewing off stuff that sounds like it was written by the Chamber of Commerce for this area. This area used to be a Roman territory. And it was the fourth largest city in the world in Roman times. Yeah, yeah, then everyone moved away. So I guess that means now that we know that statue that looked very ancient is probably very ancient. And okay, that's wonderful. And what's even more wonderful is now for no particular reason, Can Soup's like, Boar, let's watch cat videos together on my phone. I'm serious. She's like, Boar, you're watching some goddamn cat videos with me, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yep, this is really happening. And I'm already cracking up a little bit. I like how they're so slow to respond to the violent shaking of the room. And speaking of shaking... <laughs> so Boar drops to the ground, freaking out because of the earthquake, while Can Soup just stands all proud and is like, Boar, keep yourself together, man. You're a seismologist, for God's sake. Oh, that was an impressive action sequence. And that's also the only object that these earthquakes ever appeared to knock over. Dressers. Yeah, it happened in Boar's house, and it's happening here in the hotel room. This earthquake exclusively hates dressers for some reason. I guess that's how you can tell it's a man-made earthquake, because real earthquakes don't harbor those sorts of prejudices.
I guess Can Soup was trying to be nice there, but she does not know how to do it. So Boar has simophobia. He's scared of earthquakes, yet is a seismologist. That's really funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this is supposed to be like a really emotional moment where our character is revealing something that makes him very vulnerable, but still, it's just really funny for some reason for me. I don't know why. It's just kind of like so cheesy, yet so adorable at the same time. It's like I'm an adventure game fan that's scared of mouses, but I've tried to prevail and go through it every day. <sighs> but in Boris' case, he does have a legitimate reason to be scared of earthquakes. They did kill his family back in 1999. Yeah, so I guess he cries every time he hears that one Prince song. God, I'm becoming as insensitive as Can Soup. But yeah, it appears our characters are starting to make an emotional connection. Can Soup's like, no, big head, you're my assistant for life. I'm going to help you get over your fear of earthquakes. And our dude's like, thank you, Can Soup. Thank you. You are the rock which... I lay upon. And yeah, they go exploring the house and find the other people and chill out in the dark. So everyone in the house goes downstairs and finds the old lady staring at a TV that don't work no more. Obviously depressed, because she's like, Damn it, I was watching my soaps. Game of Thrones was on. God damn it, now the DVR ain't gonna even catch it. But any hoot, as you expect, Boar, who had just gone through a traumatic experience, they're gonna let him chill out, just let him relax a little bit, maybe make him some hot tea. Oh, wait a minute. Now, they're gonna send him outside in the middle of the night to turn the power on because Boar is everyone's bitch around here. So Boar proceeds to siphon gas out of the Jeep and then puts it in the generator. And while this is going on, old Can Soup has a powwow with everyone because now she's buddy buddy with everybody in this house. I'm starting to suspect that Can Soup may be a character out of Mean Girls, because for no particular reason, she volunteers some really deep and personal information about Boar. She's like, hey everyone in this room, I know a dude who's scared to death of earthquakes, but works as a seismologist. You get one guess, it's Boar! <laughs> I just told everyone some personal information for no reason. Yeah, she goes whole hog. She's like, earthquakes killed his family in 1999. And what's even funnier, and I'm sorry, this is pretty damn funny, is the other character's reactions, especially the other professor dude. He's like, oh, what happened to Boar is all very sad, and I appreciate him more now because of this. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it's great. It really is. And I'm not trying to be mean or anything, it's just pretty damn funny. Like, when emotional stuff doesn't work, I just find it funny. Like, I'm cracking up right now. <sighs> okay. Whew. Right. So Boar goes back in the house, and everyone's like, cool, let's all go to bed now. The power's back on. I mean, they could have just waited till morning if they were all planning on going to bed anyway. But I guess then Can't Soup would have been able to volunteer all that deep personal stuff about Boar. What the hell is that old lady watching? It sounds like her TV's possessed. Just like Boris possessed by the ghost of his past, he's reliving the horrible earthquake that killed his parents in a dark void. Now there is a face of the man who has just experienced a great tragedy. Oh wait, his mom is... Can Soup? Wait, this is kind of getting weird. And maybe a little bit Freudian. So that does it, ladies and gentlemen, and I've brought in between for day two, because we're on to day three now. If you're wondering what happens to Can Soup, she just goes to bed and it says day three. She don't get no cool ass cutscene, unlike our hero. That's right. I'm pretty convinced now that Boar's intended to be the main character of this game, and Can Soup's just here to bring the man down. And we'll find out how next time here on Overanalyze Adventures. Have a good day, guys. Uh... Subscribe!